Hey there everyone and welcome back to another exciting video on my channel. I'm Jeff and today we're diving deep into the latest miraculous adventure with season 5 episode 27 action. But before we jump into this action packed review, don't forget to hit that like button if you're excited to discuss this episode. And if you haven't already, click subscribe and ring that notification bell so you never miss our miraculous updates. Now, let's get started. While the grand finale of season 5 has already unveiled the ultimate storyline, today's episode takes us back in time just before Chloe's mayoral journey in collusion. Our heroes are on a mission to combat the rampant overuse of plastic, with the goal of curbing Earth's pollution levels. Similar to the mini-COVID episode, this installment is all about raising awareness about environmental pollution and the critical need of its reduction. While it's understandable that some viewers may have reservations about this episode, especially considering the high standards set by seasons 4 and 5, it's important to recognize that there are individuals who criticize it solely out of toxic mindset rather than constructive criticism. In this episode, Adrienette and their friends gather at the Liberty to discuss their plan to reduce pollution. Unfortunately, their pollution-reducing machine explodes due to plastic pollution. They decide to approach Bertrand King, the owner of a plastic manufacturing company, for help. However, Bertrand and others are more interested in maintaining the pollution cycle. Unable to persuade them, the group resorts to hacking a channel to raise global awareness. Gabriel and Andre change their stance, angering Bertrand, who gets akumatized into the King of Plastic with the power to turn people into plastic. Lady Noir confronts him in an epic battle, defeating him with plastic. This experience leads the villain to realize the importance of recyclable products. This episode might just trigger a wave of nostalgia, reminding you of the show's simpler times before the introduction of complex storylines in the later seasons. While it's true that some character actions may not perfectly align with the overarching plot, the episode still offers an enjoyable viewing experience. As usual, we'll break down our review into many topics to keep our thoughts organized, beginning with an examination of the animation. While we still don't have official confirmation about whether Ineffecto handled the animation entirely or if it was a collaborative effort similar to episodes like Destruction or Migration, the animation in this episode has its share of highs and lows. The quality and the lighting remained consistently impressive throughout the episode, but there were noticeable shortcomings in character movement. In certain scenes, the character appeared more rigid than fluid, almost like figurines rather than displaying natural motion. However, despite this drawback, the overall quality managed to make it up for it. I found myself captivated by the character models for most of the episode. The playful expressions on their faces brought back a wave of nostalgia from the happy bear moments of season 2 and 3. It was a truly welcome throwback. Now that we've discussed the animation, let's delve into the Adrianet dynamic. As mentioned earlier, this episode takes place before the events of Collusion, and we can be certain of this because Chloe isn't the mayor yet. Furthermore, it's clear that this episode occurs after adoration since Adrianette appears to be in a well-established relationship. Adrianette is a central aspect that I'll be focusing on in this video. The episode beautifully showcases their relationship as they work together as a couple. What's truly heartwarming is that they get to experience being normal teenagers, almost like any other young couple, away from the intense drama that has unfolded in previous seasons. They share affectionate hugs and hold hands, creating an incredibly endearing atmosphere. Even in their superhero alter egos, which we'll discuss later in this video, their care for each other shines through. It's a side of the relationship that I've been eager to see, extending beyond mere affection into genuine care and support. Let's shift our focus to Lady Noir, their superhero alter egos. Once again, this episode highlights the enduring platonic dynamic between the two, the very partnership that we've always cherished. The banter, the puns, and everything in between were nothing short of iconic. In season 4, I found myself missing this aspect due to the introduction of additional heroes. It's not that I dislike the idea of new heroes, but I believe that if it was integrated more seamlessly without sidelining the original duo's relationship, it would have been even more enjoyable. Likewise, in season 5, the story's intensity sometimes overshadowed these smaller action moments. However, I absolutely loved how they defeated the villain, bringing back that classic pounded gesture that I've missed. Their partnership remains nothing short of amazing, and I couldn't be happier about it. Now, let's delve into the topic of character development. While this episode primarily serves as a filler, as we discussed earlier in the video, it's worth noting that certain character actions don't seamlessly align with the overarching storyline. In particular, I'd like to focus on Andre. Since Season 4 Episode 7 Soul Crusher, we've witnessed Andre's redemption arc. While he wasn't a villain, he was using his influence over Paris until his redemption was finalized in Collusion, where he stepped down as a mayor and chose to become a director instead. 
Now, considering that this episode is set before Pollution and after Adoration, two episodes that highlighted Andre's positive character traits, his actions in this episode where he appears to be more concerned about preserving his image, seem somewhat perplexing. It feels like a writing inconsistency that doesn't quite align with the character development we've seen thus far. Now, after discussing various aspects of the episode, there's one thing that truly stands out, the introduction of the new character Bertrand. His emergence into the story, especially after Gabriel and Andre have been removed from their position of power opens up a exciting possibility that I hope the creators explore in the upcoming season. It would be fascinating to witness a dynamic where Tomoe, now in control of the Grass Company, exerts influence over Bertrand. While he may be primarily associated with plastic manufacturing, he is one of the biggest players on the global stage. I'm eager to see how the writers will utilize his character, and I sincerely hope he doesn't suffer from the fate of being forgotten, much like other previously introduced characters such as Clara Nightingale. With that, we conclude our review of the latest episode of Miraculous. While it was indeed a simpler episode, it offered enjoyable moments on various fronts. Now, we're eager to hear your thoughts. What did you think of it? Did you find it engaging? Do you believe Bertrand will have a significant role in the upcoming season? Please share all your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next week.